Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. A good Tuesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, feeling fantastic, and uh, certainly have had yourselves a great Tuesday and a great start to your week. I know for me, today was much better compared to Monday. Monday was brutal for me, <laughs> but uh, I try to always uh, be positive, stay in a positive mindset, but uh, th thank the good Lord that today was much better. Uh, but certainly hope you guys are doing well out there. Appreciate you folks tuning in this, this evening. We got two major topics to talk about. One is a severe weather threat for tomorrow across areas of the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes region. And then the uh, second half of the video will go to talking about the tropics. We have three areas of interest. Two of them, I don't think we have anything to worry about with. There's one way out in the MDR, which stands for Main Development Region, the Tropical Atlantic, along the monsoon trough, which is basically an area of showers and storms, uh, moist air, that we need to watch. Um, there is some support with this. Uh, so we're going to give you an update on that. And if the models can, can continue to somewhat come together a little bit, this will become a bigger topic on at least this channel. So we'll break that down too. But I know there's um, a lot of people concerned about what can happen tomorrow. I know I got a lot of uh, people, uh, faithful viewers, um, that view from the Ohio region and the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes region. I really appreciate you folks. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you some update information and then we'll do it again in the morning and we'll get detail. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So we'll start this off right with a bang and just look at the um, Storm Prediction Center for tomorrow. Remember this is for tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, so if you're watching this and it's Wednesday morning, this is for today. But of course, it'll be new information by the time we wake up tomorrow. Uh, we'll get another Storm Prediction Center update probably around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning tonight. As of right now, you have the enhanced risk. Yes, this does include Detroit, uh, Toledo, Ann Arbor, Lansing, Flint, um, all the way. Uh, technically, you know, Grand Rapids is in that slight risk, but does include South Bend. Um, it pretty much goes all the way down to the Fort Wayne area. Then the slight risk extends all the way into central, um, central areas of Michigan, all the way to Chicago, almost all the way down to Indianapolis. This does pretty much include the, Col the Columbus region, pretty much the northern suburbs, and it does include Cleveland. In fact, I would, you know, Cleveland, you're, you're really close to that enhanced risk. But as we know, don't focus too much on the, the exact gradient of the yellow and orange. But enhanced is a level three out of five. If you don't know, slight in the yellow, that's a level two out of five. Dark green, level one out of five. So what is the tornado risk with this? Well, in the green, that's a 2% risk of a tornado. In the brown, that is a 5% risk of a tornado. So basically in that entire enhanced risk, you have a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any given location. So there is a tornado risk tomorrow. The tornado risk can be, I wouldn't say significantly higher, depending on kind of what un unfolds overnight into tomorrow, but it could be higher. Um, and I could see something happening where all of a sudden we, we have a 10% risk, but as of now, just a 5% risk. The health threat for tomorrow, uh, just, a, just a standard 15% risk of hell. And that means there's a 15% risk of hell exceeding um, one inch in diameter or larger in the yellow area. Okay. The wind threat. All right. There is a 30% risk in the red area of winds exceeding 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. And then the yellow, that's a 15% risk of that same criteria. So technically there is no hatched risk yet, but I have a feeling that we might end up getting it as we wake up tomorrow morning with another update. But this is as of right now, as of, you know, around 630 Eastern time, 530 you guys' time and um, uh, central time. So this is what we're dealing, dealing with with the Storm Prediction Center. I do want to mention there's a severe weather threat for the Northeast for Thursday, but I'm not going to talk much on that. I'll get detail with that probably into tomorrow or tomorrow night, something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the HRRR model and the NAM with all these regions. Okay, we're going to start off with Michigan and really just zoom in right on Michigan and even areas of eastern uh, Wisconsin. So I'm going to compare the HRRR model with the NAM because they look drastically different. And uh, it even discusses this in the, I believe, in the Storm Prediction Center uh, discussion. And many people are talking about this on social media about uh, kind of not necessarily which models are going to win, but um, just the difficulties of this forecast. So we're waking up tomorrow morning. This is around 7 a.m. Central Time. I think we, if we're going off the HRRR model, I think we're going to have a, a pretty big time line of storms here in uh, Central Wisconsin. I kind of talked about this last night. So, you know, I'm sorry, this morning. So, you know, if you're in like Madison, 
Houston, Janesville, uh, even Milwaukee. Watch out tomorrow morning, uh, like early to midway tomorrow morning. These storms will be racing. I think they could hit. Like if the H triple R model is correct, which I could see a line of storms. It really just depends on what unfolds over the next several hours a little bit further west. If the H triple R model is correct, it wants a pretty potent line of storms that is likely producing damaging winds somewhere in this line of storms, slamming the west coast of Lake Michigan, uh, Milwaukee, um, maybe even all the way up to Green Bay and everybody in between. Uh, this would be a pretty powerful line of storms around 10 a.m. to lunchtime tomorrow. Uh, this quickly, within an hour or two, crosses Lake Michigan, and then here it comes for our folks in western Michigan, okay? So um, if the HRRR model is correct, uh, Grand Rapids, 1 to 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, a pretty potent line of storms moves through. If this is the way it play, plays out, I definitely think we'll get a hatch risk for damaging winds. This could be a significant wind threat for you folks in Michigan, especially the uh, southern two-thirds of uh, the Michigan, not including the UP. UP, I don't think you're going to get any severe weather. You're going to be north of the warm front, which um, will be, you'll basically have a trailing cold front and then a warm front that rises that will bring very moist air into Michigan tomorrow with an associated low pressure surface low with this embedded pulse of energy that moves across this region. But let's get back to this. So, you know, this line of storms continues, starts to blast through the Lansing area, Kalamazoo, and then heads on off and affects Flint start to get closer to Detroit area, uh, Midland, Saginaw, you guys are affected. Does it affect areas like up here near Traverse City or Traverse City, however way y'all pr uh, pronounce that? Definitely correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't get offended at all by it. You guys are always very kind and I really appreciate it. Um, but these storms are hitting your area maybe around early to mid afternoon based off the HRRR model. But I think that once you get into the northern portion of Michigan up here, you get to a little bit more stable air, but we'll see how far this warm front rises. But it has a nasty line of storms blasting through the eastern portion of uh, Michigan uh, probably after 3 o'clock. Detroit, you know, 3 to 5 p.m., storms could blast through your region. Okay, and then just some lingering rain behind it could have some more storms that form behind this line around, you know, 5 to 7 p.m., moves through the rest of southeast Michigan right down here. You see you got some more storms around the Lansing area, Detroit, Ann Arbor, Jackson, uh, moving through this region right down here. Poor, uh, poor uh, Huron, uh, <laughs> tri trippy word. Um, moving through that area, watch out um, as this heads to uh, Lake Huron over here. So this will continue to move um, eastward, and then after that, you're pretty much done. By the time you get into the late evening hours, you're done with the severe weather threat. So that's the HRRR model, right? Let's take a look at what the NAM shows. Something totally different. It wants to bring more widespread rains um, tomorrow for the UP of Michigan. The HRRR model doesn't show much rain for the UP of Michigan. Um, but this is what it wants to show for around 10 to 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Uh, lunchtime tomorrow. Okay, it shows this on the NAM around 10 a.m., right? But um, on the HRRR model, okay, it shows um, this at 10 a.m. So you compare this with this. That's a big difference, right, for you folks that, you know, reside in um, uh, eastern areas of Wisconsin. That's a huge difference. Hard to, you know, figure out who's going to be right with this. So it's a big question, you know, and I don't want to ignore Wisconsin out of this as we're waking up tomorrow morning. A lot of people aren't talking about Wisconsin, but you know, you could very well be dealing with some nasty storms tomorrow morning in areas of Wisconsin. You really could. Um, so you continue to go through here and then kind of like the leftover energy flows into Michigan and you're around 2 p.m. You got some storms firing up here in northern Michigan, but not a whole lot going on here in southern Michigan. Okay, but you do get some storms that finally get going. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a surface load nearby. The kinematics are going to be maxed out in this region. Moist air will build, and you got to watch out for some spin ups also with these storms. Okay, NAM does have a, a stronger low pressure scenario the last time I looked. So you watch out um, for, you know, I wouldn't be, we're probably going to get several tornado warnings tomorrow in Michigan, I, I would bet. Uh, but you watch out these storms flying through like the Midland area, Saginaw, Flint up here, um, you know, in the um, lower populated areas of kind of northeast Michigan up here in this region, you know, 4, 5, 6 p.m., got some active weather really rolling through this area. And then, it, you know, you, you get that to pulls through, and then you have another area that comes through in Michigan. And this is around 9 p.m., some storms kind of flying through central Michigan, 
And then this would bring a pretty stormy late evening overnight hours for maybe southeast portions of Michigan. So two totally different scenarios for Michigan, right, and Wisconsin. Um, we look down here at, um, and, you know, we're going to do this a little bit different here. I, I don't like the way I set this up, so we're going to do something on the fly. So we look at um, the significant tornado parameter for Michigan based off the HRRR model for tomorrow, okay? You can actually see a triple point being met right into here, right over Lake Michigan. You see how uh, the, the significant tornado parameter rises to a one or two right over this area, and then there's a, a distinct cutoff right into here. And to here, uh, that indicates a trailing cold front and instability building ahead of the cold front. So um, the significant tornado parameter wants to rise, you know, to a four, five, six, seven, maybe, into southern Michigan. It really likes this area of southern Michigan to, to have the highest STP reading. So just think of this as the area that the model likes the highest tornado threat in would be right in here. That doesn't mean that there's, you know, like I said, like a, like a 7 out of 10 chance to see a tornado in this region. That's not what this means, or 7 out of 12 or whatever. Um, it just means that the higher this number goes, the, the higher chances this model likes uh, for there to be um, the ingredients for a tornado in this region. So that's what, you know, that's what the HRRR model says. Um, you look also at the updraft felicity swath, and um, you take it all the way throughout the next uh, 48 hours here, or 36 hours, and, uh, you know, basically these highlighted colored areas is where the HRRR model likes some of these storms to be rotating. You know, you got to watch just north of Detroit, okay? Um, you know, in this little corner right here of Michigan, right into here, um, you know, uh, north of Detroit, the Flint area, you got to be careful, okay? Um, the HRRR model likes some of these storms to be, uh, you know, spinning right here, but remember, this is just model guidance, okay? Um, but one thing I will I will talk about is if the HRRR model is correct with this line of storms, um, you know, it, it likes, you know, even in eastern Wisconsin, you know, 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts with this line of storms moving through eastern Wisconsin, this blast over Lake Michigan heads into Mich uh, heads into Michigan. Sorry, got Okay, can you please get out of my face? All right, thank you. Uh, a little bit of fly trapped in my room. Okay, so um, you see this area right into here. I mean, this is getting into western Michigan, around the Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo area. Um, this is around 1 p.m., so pretty early in the day. You know, you got a lot of storms based off the HRRR model. You know, it's packing 50, 60, 70 mile per hour wind gusts, but typically this overdoes it, and this flies through the entire state. Well, uh, well, not the entire state, but the central portion of Michigan pumps out some pretty intense weather into this region. Okay, so this would this would be a big time damaging wind scenario from Grand Rapids, basically down Interstate what 96 down to Lansing, Kalamazoo. Um, and then eventually get into the Flint area, and the worst of the weather would be just north of uh, Detroit. Okay, so, so I know that's everywhere, but the models are kind of everywhere, guys. So um, if we talk, if we talk about areas like Indiana and Ohio and Illinois, okay, really just talking about Indiana and Ohio. I mean, there's an enhanced risk that extends pretty deep into Indiana and Ohio. So you're thinking, well. Well, what's going on with the model guys down here? Well, there could be some storms based off the HRRR model. We'll compare it with the NAM too. As early as, uh, you know, mid-morning in central Indiana tomorrow. But as you can tell, it keeps that nasty line of storms in Michigan. And there's not a whole lot going on down here in Illinois, Indiana. Um, in fact, it really doesn't get anything going really in northern Indiana at all. The HRRR model says... I mean, you're not going to get nothing in Indiana. Now, it does have some storms firing up here in the northwest corner of Ohio. Okay, you know, the Toledo area, um, you know, Bowling Green region. You know, it does have some storms firing up in this region. Eventually, you know, maybe making it into the Cleveland area. But altogether, the HRRR model that says, nah, I mean, you're, you're not going to get much of anything tomorrow in Indiana and Ohio. Now, the NAM, a little bit different. I mean, you get into early tomorrow afternoon. You do have some storms earlier in the day, kind of, you know, uh, in, in the northwest corner of Indiana. Um, but I would tell you the NAM from from the last NAM model run looked a lot more active for Indiana, Ohio. But it does have some storms popping off here, right where Kentucky, West Virginia, and Ohio meet. You could have some storms tomorrow mid-afternoon in southern Ohio. 
But and then we had some storms that fire up around 7, 8 p.m. around Cleveland Point South. But I, but I can tell you, I mean, it doesn't. I mean, you get you get some storms in northern Indiana around midnight tomorrow night. But it's weird, you know. You got the enhanced risk that extends, okay, down into these portions right here. But the model guidance doesn't short range model guidance doesn't really support it much. The NAM and the HRRR model don't. So, um, you know, it's it, it's a weird one to figure out. And, I mean, honestly, I don't even, let's see, getting my panels mixed up. I got to be a little bit more prepared than this. But, you know, honestly, you know, I don't even have the, I mean, you look at the updraft velocity swath from the, um, from the NAM, and, I mean, it shows a little bit of stuff going on right here. But if you were basing off the NAM and the HRRR model, which are two models that, you know, are pretty well known in the weather community, it would show that Indiana and Ohio are not going to be that active. But we could wake up tomorrow morning, talk about this all over again, be totally different. So just remember that. Um, but, you know, we already mentioned this, 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 and, um, yeah, we already talked about that. So um, if we're talking about the ingredients here, and I'm sorry I'm everywhere, guys. I, I had my um, panels pulled up a little weird in this video. The ingredients, what we do know is if you keep – Moving this forward, you see these buckles and this pressure gradients right in here. That is our low pressure. That is our uh, very compact piece of energy um, in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And this moves through and it brings a, uh, an area of enhanced kinematics, you know, mid-level uh, pulse uh, with mid-level winds, uh, winds aloft, you know, pushing and the mid-level is pushing, you know, 60, 70 knots. So if the HRRR model is correct, I think you're going to have a big time damaging wind threat in Michigan. But do, do remember that there's going to be enough kinematics, enough backing of winds, we say, uh, to support um, with this surface low, to support some veering in the low levels of the atmosphere, which means you can have some rotation in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which means you're going to probably get some kind of tornado threat tomorrow. That's why you got the 5% risk. And then, you know, you look at the, um, the CAPE, and I'm going to look at the NAM with this. Okay, because I think the NAM is going to be more correct, in my opinion. And the CAPE really builds in to Michigan. You got CAPE levels to build into, you know, anywhere from, you know, I think the Storm Prediction Center mentions 1,500 to 3,000 joules per kilogram. So you got a lot of energy, especially in northern, the further south you go, the better uh, CAPE values that you have. Okay, so right around the Indiana, Michigan, the Ohio state border right here, Cape values well over 2,000 joules per kilogram. So you've got enough energy in the atmosphere for a pretty decent amount of time. I mean, as you even get into late in the evening, you got Cape values well over 1,000 joules per kilogram based off the NAM. So you definitely got some energy in the atmosphere. And uh, what's wild is in Michigan, you wake up to dew points in the 50s, and you're thinking there's no way severe weather's coming. But you go hour by hour, you get into you know, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., lunchtime, you go from dew points in the upper 50s to dew points in the upper 60s in Mount Pleasant, Lansing, Grand Rapids. So you'll basically go from, um, you know, a not very humid atmosphere to a pretty humid atmosphere by the time you get into the uh, afternoon. And downright tropical atmosphere in certain areas based off model guidance, dew points will potentially rise into the low 70s. So it's this is definitely, tip this is something you really see like in the deep south in the spring where you'll wake up to a kind of some cool, crisp conditions, and then the atmosphere totally changes as you move late in the morning into the afternoon hours. This will be kind of what happens in Michigan tomorrow. So, all right, let's move to the tropics. So, you know, you, you still got this 10% risk of development with this, and you still got a 10% risk within the seven days of this, but we're not even going to talk about that anymore. It's this. This is the new thing. Um, this is right where the energy is, way out here in the eastern tropical Atlantic, you know, off the coastline of um, North Africa. And it's saying that by the time this gets into this region, it'll have a, it'll still have that, it'll have a 20, basically it's saying I have a 20% chance to develop into a tropical depression or named storm by the time it gets into this region, which will be um, just uh, north or north, um, northeast of the Lesser Antilles. Okay. So I know this looks odd. It's like pointing a huge arrow way out in this area. It's basically saying it does not think that this is probably going to develop in this area. If it's going to develop into something, it'll be this area. But remember, this could change. Okay, so uh, we'll have another update at um, 8 p.m. to see what it looks like. So we look at water vapor loop. 
this is that little area that they're watching some showers and storms really associated with a kind of an upper level trough if you will and then what's left of our open wave here in the eastern caribbean uh, delivering some showery conditions in the lesser antilles uh, puerto rico things like that but then we look out here in our monsoon trough okay a lot of dry air in the in the black region that stands for all dry and all levels okay uh, the bluish colors you see moist low to mid levels okay and then the green that is moist upper levels okay and then when you start to get high cloud tops deep clouds you see the reds but we don't have anything like that out there right now but um there's a big moist pocket of air right here in the central and eastern areas of uh, the main development region okay uh, so this is where we will try to find some kind of dominant vortice here in the coming days and we'll try to get some kind of tropical development eventually as this continues to move it's going to fight some dry air on top which there's always dry air in this region saharan dust in this region right near here so it's going to deal with this dry air but if you notice if some kind of vortice forms into this region right near here okay i mean it's got some it's got some moist air surrounding it okay so it's going to be protected somewhat so um let's compare some model guidance all right let's talk about uh, the gfs and, and this is new to me this is a gfs running right now so what you're about to see is new to me also okay and i can tell you the gfs is the model that's just gung-ho on uh, there being a major hurricane out of this but the gfs always does crazy stuff so we'll start off tomorrow morning here it is this is our tropical wave somewhere into here just an area of moisture no we don't want to pull that up um, just an area of moisture right here in the central main development region this continues doesn't develop i mean we get into saturday morning it finally pops an l right here you can see it at this point um it begins to try to get its act together okay you know by the time we're into um six days from now it's a thousand and eight millibar low pressure based off the gfs um right in that region where the national hurricane center gives it a chance to develop okay we keep this going um it's trying to strengthen at this point it gets north of puerto rico uh, around literally a week from today this will be a week from today gets north of puerto, puerto rico and then it gets to a sub 1000 millibar low pressure about a week out about a week and a day out from today okay it gets north of the dominican republic looks like it's heading right towards the bahamas and if we were to keep this going uh yes and it does develop it into another hurricane like the last run and uh yeah I know, I know my folks here in the Carolinas are certainly looking at this and going, oh no, we got a hurricane coming in the beginning of August. Guys, that's not what that means. Um, this is just the GFS. It does crazy stuff like this all the time. So uh, just remember that. Just remember that. But the GFS does continue to show this wild scenario where um, there is a hurricane off the coast of the southeast 10 days from now. So we'll continue to watch that. One thing we need to watch with these just these operational runs, which is what these are all we're looking at, and really we really need to focus on ensembles. But you know, I'd like to show you all the information on here. Um, but we need to see if any kind of if we if we this has a legit chance to happen. I imagine that here in the next day or so, some of the other models will latch onto the idea. But the European low pressure right down here. We got this going. Same thing as you know, same thing as the GFS. Doesn't really have this developing if it even does until it gets right about here. And uh, this is an open wave still, but the placement of high pressure is a little different. So whatever this is begins to um, find this weakness on the west side of this high pressure, finds a weakness right in here, and then takes whatever the heck this is based off the euro and uh, doesn't do anything. Okay. It rounds it up and it basically heads out to sea before it even comes close to even Bermuda. Okay. What does the icon model do? Same thing. Doesn't do much throughout the, the week into the weekend. Um, but still has a, a pretty decent wave as we get about five, six days from now. And this is as far out as the latest as the as the as the latest icon goes. It goes all the way out to Sunday afternoon. Doesn't really have much of anything. So GFS, what I'm trying to say, is on an island. Okay, so we look at the European ensemble. There is a, I would say there's probably about 35, 40% of the members that does show some kind of uh, appreciable low pressure. But look how every single one of them goes out to sea. There is some strong ones in here, but all of them go out to sea. There's a couple of them that want to get a little bit closer to the eastern U.S., um, but most of them go out to sea. And it's the same thing with the GFS ensemble. 
uh, you know, there's a good bit of members on the GFS ensemble. Remember, there's only 21 members that make it up. And I mean, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, it looks like there's almost every single member. Um, so, but look how they're all heading out to sea with the ridge access right into here. So just, you know, we, we don't know where the placement of the high is going to be right now, but what, what we, what we do know is, um, that we do have a lot of moisture in this area. That's all we pretty much know. But if you do look at the ingredients, one thing that you can go on and just check off the old box is sea surface temperatures. There's no point in even talking about that every single video. I will talk about it some. The sea surface temperatures are outrageous. I don't know if you guys have heard the southern tip of Florida, Key West area. I think um, uh, there was a new record uh, broke today. The sea surface temperature hit 101 degrees. Um, it's just outrageous. Um, outrageous. I don't I mean, it's just just crazy. Um, but uh, shallow water holds water, uh, holds heat content in the water a, a lot, a lot better than deep water. So that's one of the things. And you got very shallow water up the southern tip of Florida. But uh, basically, what you're looking at right here is uh, winds aloft, way up 30, 40,000 feet up in the atmosphere. We typically look at this to see how much shear is in the atmosphere. And what I'm going to tell you is, as this is right around where our low pressure will be. Um, there's not much shear. I mean, it, it might get bothered by this little tut, this little upper level low right in here. This could disrupt it. But if anything gets into this region right in here, um, it's going to do what the GFS does, and it's going to explode if the upper level pattern is what it shows right here uh, week out, which we don't know what anything's going to be a week out. But uh, there's definitely an area right into here that you want to watch and don't want anything to get into because it will explode in strength. Uh, you notice there's no blues where you got you know 20, 30 knots of shear, and uh, but uh, low shear pretty much setting up. Um, but one thing, I mean, there's always a little bit of shear, but very low shear. Um, one thing, another thing we'll look at is dry air. The browns obviously is dry air. The greens is uh, moist air. Um, this thing is going, this is the plume of moist air right here associated with this tropical wave. It's gonna be dealing with dry air on top of this the length of the system it's just um you know can this develop in the short and medium medium term to really create a cocoon of moisture to really protect it so that's all i got guys hope that helped um we'll do it again tomorrow morning for the severe weather threat god bless all y'all have a great night i'll talk to you soon